Do you like Disney movies? Do you like fantasy movies? What do you think of The Black Cauldron? The Black Cauldron is an animated Disney film from 1985. It's based on the first book of a series of novels by an author named Lloyd Alexander, part of the Chronicles of Prydane, which is in turn kind of adapted from Welsh mythology. And it's a little bit controversial, at being the first Disney animated movie to get a PG rating, and they thought it was too dark and scary for kids once it was completed, so they went through a lengthy, lengthy editing process and cut down a lot of the darker elements of the story. This movie was a box office failure. I mean, it cost like $45 million to make this thing, and it didn't even make half of that back at the box office. It put the future of Disney Animation Studios in jeopardy. They actually wouldn't be able to fully turn things around until, oh, 1989 when The Little Mermaid came out. I like this movie. It has to do with the Horned King, who is the villain in this movie, um, who's kind of like a skeleton guy and he's like an evil wizard and he wants to get a hold of the Black Cauldron so that he can summon an army of the dead skeletons and zombies and they're going to be his army and attack and destroy the world and whatever so it's pretty dark stuff and it has to do with reanimating dead people and so somewhere in rural Wales I suppose an unspecified amount of years ago there lived a pig keeper and his apprentice pig keeper's name is Durbin or Dubin or something and his apprentice's name is Taran Durbin gets word that the Horned King, who is already kind of uh, invading the land and taking over the land, he learns that he's looking for the Black Cauldron. And he fears that the Horned King is going to try to use his psychic pig to find the Black Cauldron. Well, it's not a psychic, it's like a fortune teller kind of pig. And so it's a magic pig. You place the pig's nose in a pool of liquid and say the magic words and the pig goes into a trance and then suddenly you can see visions in the in the pool of water or what pool of liquid or whatever so he sends Taran to take the pig away and keep it safe so Taran is a uh, you know his young apprentice and he's very headstrong and he wants to prove himself and be brave and he wants to be more than just a pig keeper pig keepers apprentice rather takes a pig on the road uh, I think he's gone for like a day and the pig gets captured and falls into the hands of the Horned King and his minions. Good job, Taran. Well, he has to rescue the pig. Then he finds a magic sword. He makes friends with a wild man named Gurgi. Uh, he meets a princess, Princess Elonwe, that helps him escape from the dungeon. And also in the dungeon he meets a bard whose name is Fluterflam who is uh, like this old dude and he's just a goofy kind of thespian and he has a lute that keeps breaking strings in response to any like lies or sarcastic comments that he makes and it's like trying to enhance his comedic presence I guess it doesn't really work and I also don't find Gurgi the wild man to be all that funny either um, he's supposed to be cute and mischievous and goofy, and he has a really weird voice provided by a Canadian comedian named John Biner, and it's a little bit grating. Gurgi's a little wild man. He's almost like a little furry, like an Ewok or something. He's kind of a thief, and he's kind of a sneak, and he's also kind of a coward. Um, but Taran and Gurgi's relationship is kind of central to the plot of the movie. Uh, basically, they have to keep the Black Cauldron out of the hands of the Horned King, which they actually eventually fail to do, and the Horned King uses the Black Cauldron to summon his army of the dead. And of course, in order to stop the army of the dead, 
Well, I don't want to give it away. Um, but there's, you know, some stuff between Tarin and Gurgi that has to go on here. Uh, there's goblins or a goblin. It's gonna be like barbarians or mercenaries or human enemies that Tarin has to overcome. Tarin finds a magic sword which is like super powerful and does all the fighting for him and does all these magical things that you know would be impossible without. Oh also in here you're gonna find some witches. There's a trio of witches that uh, that our heroes have to go to see to find out about the location of the Black Cauldron. There's like fairy folk in here as well. Um, the uh, Princess Alonwe has like a floating magical orb. I guess it's supposed to be an intelligent creature or something like that that guides the way. Yes, there's a lot of cool fantasy stuff in here. You know, I'm like a Dungeons and Dragons fan. Uh, I play the game. Uh, I like the movies. I like most stuff to do with Dungeons and Dragons. So I like this movie uh, because it gives me a bunch of those elements that I would find like in a Dungeons and Dragons game. Yeah, so for whatever reason this bombed. They waited like 13 years to put it on home video. Uh, that's how embarrassed Disney was of the Black Cauldron. I don't think they needed to be that embarrassed. Uh, first of all, since it came out on home video, it's become a cult classic. Because this is like, whoa, this is the movie that almost killed Disney. They ended up doing alright. Yeah, this is only my second viewing of The Black Cauldron. I never did see this up until about uh, three, four years ago. When I watched it then, I was like, why haven't I seen this before? Yeah, so the voice actors are good, the characters are good, the animation is very good. Uh, some of it's a little more on the kid-friendly side than I would like. But uh, yeah, there's depictions of animated corpses, uh, there's dragons in there, or little dragons anyway. The backgrounds look fantastic. Apparently this is the first Disney movie to ever use any kind of computer generated animation. Yeah, so that ended up costing the studio quite a bit more too. Uh, the music in here is very epic, I think very appropriate for a fantasy story of this caliber. Uh, I don't think there's very many songs per se you know I mean there's no under the sea in there or anything like that it's I think it's mostly orchestral score for this whole thing overall I enjoyed the black cauldron I thought it was a good watch and I'm glad that I watched it again I'll probably watch it again uh, you know I won't be in a hurry because I've got a billion freaking movies to watch here I recommend it if you like Disney movies, you're going to like this. If you like fantasy movies, you're probably going to like this. Black Cauldron, in my opinion, gets a B-. minus. There's a couple things that uh, you might not enjoy about it. You know, some of the character moments are just kind of cheesy and obviously aimed at kids. Nothing is annoying enough to bring it any lower than a B-. minus. So until next time, have a good one, everybody.